We're going to talk about prayer today, and specifically, how many people does it take praying to get the prayer answered? Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. today. And again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for um, for taking a little break in your day to spend with the word and with a, a few thoughts from the old guy. I <laughs> appreciate it. Well, there's a question that I'd like to spend some time on today, and it's this one. And it comes from a friend through email, and he says, Dear Pastor Bob, can you help me mobilize 1,000 people to pray for my son's recovery. He has a life-threatening disease, and I need to get as many people praying as I can so that he'll recover. How about that? How many people does it take praying to get the prayer answered? And is it the amount of people praying that gets God to move and heal and answer prayer. And then we have another scripture that people quote a lot. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power, produces great, wonderful results. Or the, the, uh, the earnest prayer of a righteous man availeth much, King James. What about that? So that's one person praying, and this is a thousand people praying, and what does it take? And every day on Facebook, I get, you know, messages from people saying, would you pray for, and they will list it. And then I'll see people posting, would you pray for this person? We're trying to get as many people praying as we can. Does it take a lot of people to get a prayer answered? Maybe you haven't thought about that. You know, and a lot of times when we have a prayer request, we do ask people to pray for us. And I enjoy praying for people. I don't mind doing that. When somebody asks me to pray, I usually do. But what about this? Can you help me mobilize a thousand people? You know, this scripture in James is kind of revealing. <clears throat> and... You know, one of the keys to scripture is not to pull it out of its context, but to leave it there. And when you read the scripture, it's really talking about something else altogether. James 5, 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now that's where it starts. Confessing your sins to each other. Well, that's a different thing. <laughs> And then it says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces great results. But why is this? And why does it talk about sin? Because that's the context here. Confess your sins to each other. And they're talking about trusted friends, people in the body of Christ, people that you have a relationship with. Tell them what's going on. Tell them what you're struggling with. And it's not talking about standing up before the church and confessing all of your detailed difficulties and beginning to make a list of your sins and making sure that you, you know, broadcast it to the world. He's not talking about randomly confessing all of your sins to each other. In this context, he's speaking about confessing your sins before trusted friends, people that you have a relationship with so that you can be healed of that sin. Mm. Not really talking about physical healing here, although it does in other places, but that's not really this context, although this is a scripture that people like to use. But I don't see any scripture that says if you get more and more and more people together, that you can be healed physically. You know, I think God is a lot more concerned about our spiritual healing than our physical healing in the first place. 
and a lot of scripture that has to do with healing. We just assume it has to do with physical healing. Many times it's just talking about spiritual healing. And in this case, it's talking about healing from specific sins. And why is it important to confess your sins to them? Well, confession is a healing thing as well. When I confess my sins to one another, it does two things. It first of all, gets me in a position where I'm ready to be healed of that sin. I'm not gonna just randomly, from this point on, just, it's gonna bother me. <laughs> and it also gives people an opportunity to know what I'm struggling with, to, to stand with me, to encourage me as I go forward. Not to beat me over the head and say, okay, how are you doing with that? But to say, you know, I know you can do this. I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to believe with you. I I'm going to help you when you're struggling. Give me a call. It's that kind of thing. And that's why you confess it to trusted friends. Because these are the people you have that kind of relationship with. But it's talking about sin. So what about mobilizing a thousand people to pray for your son's recovery? When I got the Bell's palsy, I asked a few of my close friends to pray for me. And only the people that were kind of in my inner circle, so to speak, uh, knew about this and I didn't broadcast it. And there's a couple of reasons that I didn't, honestly. <clears throat> First of all, I didn't want this to happen. You know, the let's get a thousand people praying and, and all of that. And, and I didn't want it to be out of proportion and I didn't want it to uh, be the focus of attention. Secondly, um, I had a very strange experience early on with it. When I walk in public, I smile at people and they smile back. And I love just randomly talking to people and encouraging them. And it's just kind of what I do and it's who I am. And I noticed right away that people were not smiling at me, although I was smiling at them, I thought. And I would talk to them and they would kind of be a little put off with me. And I realized that I look scary and I don't look like I'm smiling. And it just totally changed everything. And I realized at that point that I couldn't podcast because I couldn't communicate what I was feeling with my face. Still not great at it, but I'm a whole lot better than I was. And right now you can tell I'm smiling, but you couldn't even tell before. And so that was a big deal. And I decided I just can't podcast well because I can't communicate who I am with my face. But I didn't mobilize a lot of people, but I did ask the people that are closest to me to pray for me. And, uh, and, and you know, it's that's a little uh, difficult because I realize, I honestly do realize that it doesn't take a lot of people praying for God to, you know, answer your prayer. But it does feel good to to know that there are people who have my back and I can tell anything to. And when they remember me in prayer, there's a fondness. There's a connection. And I wanted them to connect with this as well. So let me set up a scenario for you. Let's say that, that there's a person that lives a block away from me that has a life-threatening disease. He has no friends. He has no one really to connect with. He doesn't really know that many Christians. And he, well, would be in need of prayer, according to this. And I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of people. If I wanted to, I could mobilize probably thousands of people to pray for me. And the question is this. Do I have a better chance of being healed than the guy down the street does because I can get so many people praying for me? You know the answer. It's no. 
Because I know that even if I simply pray for myself, God hears that prayer. He's not dependent on the number of people praying for me. But there's a, there's a word here in this James chapter 5 scripture that I think is pretty cool. And the word is earnest. The earnest prayer of a righteous man. Earnest. What does that mean? It means that I am honestly seeking. I'm being serious about this. I honestly want a change. It's like the guy that, that smokes cigarettes. And he says, Lord, help me to quit smoking cigarettes, even though I really enjoy it. And he doesn't stop. Why doesn't he stop? Because he doesn't really mean that prayer. But what about the guy who says, I'm developing lung cancer. Lord, please help me to quit smoking. Now there's an earnest prayer. Why? Because there's a reason for the prayer and he really means it. So the earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and produces wonderful results. Why? Well, because he's into it. Because he wants it. He desires it. And it's not just God working with him, but he's working with it. So when I confess my sins to one another, when I, when I pray for uh, my friends, and when we have that kind of connection, there's an earnest thing going on. And I pray for healing. And because we're all connected to it, because we're all encouraging, my friends are encouraging me and I'm earnest with this, then results begin to happen. Well, I'm sorry that this man has a son that has a life-threatening disease. I really am. And um, I, I, I'm not going to mobilize a thousand people because it doesn't take a thousand people. It honestly just takes him. And I don't know why God heals some people and doesn't heal others. I really can't answer that. I think there are so many different kinds of healing and the Bible talks about so many different kinds of healing, and maybe we'll do that in another podcast. But I do know that God is faithful and he knows a little better than I do. And things that are number one on my list that I think he should do, he's saying, oh, no, 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 no. The list is much bigger than that. My number one is way up here. What you think is number one is actually number 47. Yeah. God knows best. That's why Jesus prayed, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, because that's kind of where we have to be. Lord, I don't understand all of this, and help me to understand. But here's what's on my heart, and you should always tell God what's on your heart. But I think, folks, that friends are a really important part of this, because that encouragement when you're going through difficult times is important. Which brings me to my mug for the day. You know, these are a bunch of my friends. They're guys um, who have podcasted with me at one time or another. Some still are. But they're all very good friends. I love this mug because it reminds me of that as well. And, you know, honestly, these are guys that I tell most things to. Why? Because I trust them. I know they have my back, and I know that they're part of my encouragement circle. I hope you have one of those. And I hope that you're encouraged by people in your life who you can trust when you confess your sins, when you tell them that you need healing, when you're going through something physical and you can say, pray for me. Because it's that personal communication and encouragement that means so much when times are difficult. Well, thanks for joining me for a little Java. And uh, I'm looking forward to spending this time with you more and more and more as we go forward with this podcast. God bless you. Have a great day.